Hey there, Julian from Memberstack here, and in this video, I want to talk about getting started with WISD. So if you're watching this, then, you know, you probably want to get started with WISD, which likely means you're a Webflow developer who has gotten quite good at Webflow and kind of wants to take things to the next level. And that is exactly what this video is for. I cannot teach you in this video how to do everything in WISD. I don't think one video could possibly teach that. It's a super powerful platform. But I'm going to teach you about getting started with it, some of the concepts, why you should use it, what it is, so on and so forth. So let's get into that right now. First things first, let's talk about what is WISD, which to use a quote from Alex, the CTO of FinSuite, WISD is to JavaScript what Webflow is to HTML and CSS. So if you're not familiar, Webflow essentially gives you a visual canvas to write HTML and CSS. Everything you do in Webflow is mimicking what is actually done with HTML and CSS. Wiz, on the other hand, is just like that, but with JavaScript. So similar to Webflow, it is not the most simple platform by any means, but it is super intuitive and it is super powerful. You can do most things that you would be able to do with just straight up JavaScript, if not everything. The next thing that I want to talk about is why you should use Wiz. And I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you that Wiz is the greatest thing in the world. I mean, why, in what project should you use it? What does it do? And to put it simply, what Wiz is doing is getting data, sending data, and manipulating data. So sounds super high level, but that essentially means anything that a web app does. So when you interact with any web app, even Wiz, for example, what is happening is you are getting some form of data, let's say your configuration, the way that you've set up Wiz, you're manipulating that there, you're creating stuff, creating actions, creating whatever, and then you're sending it back. So that, in essence, is how all web apps work. And once you get started with it, once you start testing it, you're going to start to realize all of the things that are truly possible with those seemingly basic concepts. So if you're a Webflow developer, then you're probably familiar with the box model, and that may have confused you at the start, and now you're like, well, yeah, obviously, the box model. Everything goes in boxes. If you can think in the box model, then you can do anything in Webflow. If you can think in the data in and out, model, method, whatever you want to call it, then you can do anything in Wiz. It's essentially the same thing. It is a concept that is very simple, but is super powerful once you figure it out. So now I want to kind of show you around Wiz so that you can see what is there and hopefully also give you some examples about what you can do with these certain things. So first things first, let's start with the two that are a lot more straightforward, and that is the apps section to start. This is essentially where you hook up any of your external data sources, any of your external points. So for example, if I go ahead and click new app, name it whatever I want, here we can see Firebase, Supabase, REST, and MemberStack. And as far as I'm concerned, Wist is going to be making a whole bunch more native integrations, just like this one with MemberStack. But REST here really allows you to interact with anything, some sort of API, your own API, whatever it may be. And this is just setting up your external data points for anything. So maybe that is member stack and maybe that is you want to be able to add members to member stack, sign them up for plans, change their details, so on and so forth. You connect member stack. Maybe you have a Xano database, which you are using to manage all sorts of data. Well, that right there is another app, something that you would be using to send data to and from. So apps themselves in this sense are very simple. As you can see, it's just a couple inputs and you're good to go. But what you do with apps, that goes into requests, which we'll get to in a minute. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the data store over here. So like I said, with Wizd, you're basically getting data, manipulating data, and sending data out. So let's say, for example, you have got something from MemberStack. Now, this isn't an exact example that you can use, but I think it would help explain the point. Let's say you get a custom field from member stack. You use your request to get the member and you can then create a variable and store the custom field within that variable. You might be thinking, why would I do that? Well, now let's say what you want to do is have it so that when a user completes a couple of actions, it is going to change that custom field. 
and then you can use actions to update the variables and then you can use a request to send it back into member stack. So that is just one example of how you can use this concept of getting data in, manipulating it and sending it out. And there is a whole bunch of different stuff in here. You typically work with it in your actions. So now let's go ahead and talk about requests. So requests are basically that messenger uh, to pretend that these are all people. The requests section is the postman. The postman is who you give your mail to and he gives the mail to you. It's that person who takes stuff and does something with it elsewhere, brings it to someone else, sends it to someone else, and sends other people's stuff to you. So basically, like I said, requests is the messenger. And to use a messenger, not messenger, to use an example for that, let's say, for example, over here. What we're trying to do is, actually, you know what? Let's use one with Supabase instead. So here, what we want to do is create selection. So this is for a SaaS that I built using MemberStack and WISD. And what we're trying to do here is get the inputs that the user has selected and update that in a row in Supabase. And this request here, we're basically setting all of that up. We're saying, yeah, I want to use Supabase and I want to create an item. I want to create an item in this table in Supabase and these are the fields that I want to map. So we're just creating this and saying, this is a request. When is it going to be used? I don't know, but it's a request and we're going to use it at some point in time. Once you have that set up, the next thing is your actions. And this is manipulating data and triggering requests as well. So just to use that exact same example and find the create selections, what we're doing here is we're saying that when this form is filled out, so let me actually pull that one open for you. Set preferences right there. So when this is filled out, when this form is filled out, as you can see here on event submit, we want to perform that request that we created and that is using all of these inputs. So as you can see here, we have our mailman, we have our request saying we wanna send data into Supabase. Then we're using our action and saying, when this happens, we wanna send data into Supabase. And that is one small example of how WISD works and how you build a web app using WISD. Even if that exact example sounds a little bit simple, once you start to stack these up, if you take a look, for example, at this, there are about a hundred different actions in here. And something that that may do is, for example, if somebody here selects Webflow UI, it is gonna show this. So again, when HubSpot is selected, it's gonna show this message. When Webflow UI is selected, it's gonna show this. When Talk2 is connected, it's gonna show this. So as you start to stack these actions, you're just building a really, really powerful web app. And finally, I want to talk about ChatGPT, just because if you're anything like me, then writing JavaScript is probably pretty tricky for you. So what I do and what I think a whole bunch of other people do as well is we communicate with ChatGPT and we tell ChatGPT what it is that we're trying to do. So for example, this is something that I wanted to check. I wanted to add a conditional to a action, which means only run the action if this is the case. And I wanted to check if this is the page that we're on and a member is logged in. So I didn't go to ChatGPT and say, this is what I'm trying to do in Wiz, because it wouldn't really know. I abstracted that and made it simple. One of my variables, ChatGPT does not need to know exactly which variable, but what I'm saying is how can I change this line here, this return path app settings, to say if this is the path and if my variable is there. So it responded to me with this right here. And I learned, okay, ampersand, ampersand is how you say and in JavaScript. So I just copied this, replaced my variable here with, well, my variable in WISD. So for example, that one is, let's say maybe, I don't know. It's, it's one of these, but then you get your variable from over here, which was member ID. I wanted to make sure it doesn't equal null. And using that, me, someone who's not very good at JavaScript whatsoever, 
I was able to write a whole bunch of JavaScript in the context of WIST. So that is about it. In this video, I hope you learned what WIST is, why you should use it, and on a high level, how it works. With this, the next thing that you can do is actually get started and try building something. I recommend starting with some sort of demo, just mess around, don't overwhelm yourself, and then from there, you can get started on an actual project. So I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.